Hello. So before we look the x-ray examples, we will first analyze some important details in lung anatomy and um, how actually, uh, what are the factors that are important and the anatomical features that are important in analyzing later pneumothorax uh, on x-ray. So here we have two lung fields, the right lung field and the uh, uh, left lung field, which has some pathology on it. So first of all, here is the rib cage, and here is the lung, and the lung, the lung tissue, the whole lung field here has actually, uh, the whole uh, lung has a lining on it. It is lining the whole of the lung, and this lining is actually called uh, the visceral uh, pleura. So, in Latin, this lining is called pleura visceralis. So, that is the Latin anatomical name for the visceral pleura that is lining the whole lung. Then, on the inside of the rib cage, there is also a lining. This lining is actually the parietal pleura. So, the pleura parietalis, so in Latin, that is its Latin name. Between these two linings is this space, so this space. I enlarged it here only for the purpose of demonstration. It is very, very, very narrow. This is called the plural space, so the plural space. In this pleural space, there is actually some uh, small amount of fluid, so 5 to 15 milliliters of fluid. And you can imagine that's a teaspoon of fluid on the whole, uh, on this whole lung field, if you look at it tri three dimensional. So the whole lining between these two linings, uh, there, there is only uh, fifth, about 15 milliliters of fluid squeezed in between these two linings. And the important thing here, in this plural space, we have negative pressure. So the important thing, we have negative pressure in this plural space. This little amount of fluid is produced uh, by the pleura parietalis, and it is led away by uh, lymphatic vessels uh, continuously. But there is always 5 to 15 milliliters that is there. The important thing here is that there is negative pressure. So the lungs, uh, the lung tissue has no fibrous skeleton. It tends to collapse. In order to keep it expanded, we have this negative pressure here in the pleural space. But what happens if this negative pressure is lifted? So if we look at this pathological lung field, we see this is the lung tissue and this is the parietal pleura in blue and in the dark here is where the uh, visceral pleura should be. But for example, uh, there was a break in the lung tissue and this break, maybe the patient has lung disease, bronchiectasis and these changed bronchi broke and lung entered into the pleural space and once lung uh, and air entered into the pleural space, once air is in the pleural space, the negative pressure is lifted and it becomes positive and it starts compressing uh, the lung and collapsing it. And then we see that the line of the visceral pleura, so the line of the visceral pleura is not here where it should be, or actually on x-ray it is not seen, but it can only be uh, seen once the we have a pneumothorax that collapses the lung. So that is very important in this case. There is a, a division of pneumothorax. Pneumothorax can be spontaneous when it, when it happens in healthy lung tissue. It can be secondary pneumothorax when it happens uh, as a secondary cause of some lung disease, some trauma and so on. And it can be tension pneumothorax. So for example, this pneumothorax, if we have here lung tissue that is like a, is, if, if it is forming, so this break is formed so that it 
let's when we breathe in lung uh, uh, air into the pleural space but when we breathe out this clap claps down and when we breathe out the uh, air that that was that entered into the pleural space it cannot go back then constantly air is building here and the pressure is uh, constantly rising that is called tension pneumothorax and this is that is very bad because the whole lung will uh, collapse into a bulge like this and then the tension pneumothorax will start pushing the heart and the trachea and the big uh, vessels of the heart to the other side and that can be life threatening. So now we will go and analyze actually some x-ray example of pneumothorax. So here we have an x-ray of the thorax and uh, this is a pathological x-ray but uh, first we will look at the healthy side so the left side here is healthy there is nothing interesting here first the first important thing to see is the lung field so this is the lung field and here we have the left lung the left lung uh, is normally expanded with the we don't see nothing specific here here is the hilum here are the borders of the big vessels and the heart and we see that from the hilum we see that we see here these small little whitish streaks are actually uh, uh, the vascular markings of the lung the vasculature of the lung and they go all the way from the center from the hilum all the way to the periphery so maybe it, it is hard to see here but uh, once you look at uh, x-ray images you will see if you look close enough that even here on the periphery on the whole periphery of the lung there are actually small 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 whitish uh, markings that represent these vascular markings and it is always important to find them and to look for them and to uh, see if they are present all the way from the basal part to the apical part. Also, here we see many, many people, even many doctors, often wonder what this is. This is normal air in the uh, stomach, in the gaster. So normally, normally, physiologically, we have some air in the stomach and this is it, the air bubble in the stomach. And here is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is going all the way to the ribs. This is the costo, the costo, so uh, costarum are the ribs. Phrenic, the diaphragm, so the costo phrenic angle. It is important for it to be uh, dark and sharp like this. So this is a normal lung field, obviously. Now, if we go to this side, we see here is the hilum. We now follow these vascular markings and we see here, here it is very hard to find them or they are actually not present. We see that this is dark. So uh, this is maybe not the best quality, but any uh, x-ray you look and even if you look your first x-rays, uh, if they are lower quality, that is better because then it will be easier to look at x-rays that are high quality. So here we can see there is a line. So if you will look closely from here, this line starts and goes up, 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 up. And you see how it caves here and comes somewhere here to the end. So this line is actually the visceral pleura. So there is a pneumothorax here. So this here is all air. And this air pushed the visceral pleura from the parietal pleura all the way to here and this is actually a, a pneumothorax that has uh, developed the important thing to know compare always the sides we see here how this pneumothorax uh, there is no vasculature lung markings we see the line of the visceral pleura and that is how we know that here is a pneumothorax and there is obvious asymmetry this is a no-brainer and uh, only a few, if you see five, f maybe a few of these, you will always uh, easily identify them. But uh, pneumothorax can be very subtle. So let's now look at this picture. So <clears throat> here we see that uh, 
this is a correct length field, nothing special to see here. But uh, as we see here, we see a symmetry. Uh, the first thing we can identify here is that the ribs are broken, uh, if we compare them to the healthy side. So from the second to the sixth or seventh rib, there are broken ribs, all the way from the second to the seventh or sixth rib. And uh, we can see that here, here is some space where no, so here where the dark space is, where we would expect also to see lung vasculature, we can see that there is no uh, lung vasculature. So actually here is also a small partial pneumothorax. One interesting thing on this x-ray also to identify, we see how here this is the uh, subcutaneous tissue. So here would be somewhere the skin and this is the subcutaneous tissue. Here it is normal and we see here how there is some uh, uh, blackout of this whitish uh, tissue. So this is a subcutaneous emphysema. So if you would push with your uh, hand on the skin, you will feel this. Once you feel this, you will never forget it. It is some kind of crackling feeling under the skin. So this is actually air in the subcutaneous skin or subcutaneous emphysema. It could be from the damage of the lung or outside damage that has appeared in this trauma. So sometimes pneumothorax can be very subtle to uh, <clears throat> uh, be, uh, and you need to be very careful in order not to miss these subtle pneumothoraxes. Then we have also this picture. So in this case, uh, actually, this is a very interesting case where we have also uh, two pathologies. So both lung fields look uh, problematic. I will just say it like that. So first we look at the lung markings and we see, we come to the line here and we see this is the line of the pneumothorax, the line of the viscera pleura. This is a pneumothorax on this side. Then, as we look at this side, there is also a line. There is also a pneumothorax on this side. But uh, we see that here is also a horizontal line, and that here we have a, a soft tissue shadow with a horizontal line on the other side. Also, this is actually a pleural effusion, or you can call it also a hydrothorax. So <clears throat> there is fluid in the pleural space. And there is also uh, uh, air in the fluid space. So this is hydropneumothorax, <laughs> a combination of fluid and <clears throat> air in the pleural space is called hydropneumothorax. So it is in this case bilateral or it is uh, present in both uh, hemithoraces. <clears throat> so these are uh, three uh, interesting uh, Rankin's uh, x-rays that show uh, a simple, uh, easy identifiable uh, pneumothorax uh, than also some complicated cases. In order to be proficient in an analyzing this, here are uh, the basics laid out. Only now with a quantity, with looking more and more uh, at normal and at pathological x-rays with pneumothoraxes, after some period of time, the eye gets accommodated, I would just lay, say it like that, to these images and the identification becomes more and more easier until you become a pro. Hello. So before we uh, go into pulmonary edema x-rays or before we show some examples, first we will analyze some important uh, features. So here we have a normal lung field. Uh, we see the normal uh, vascular marking and the normal tissue of the lung. So, and uh, in this normal tissue, the alveoli uh, are filled with air. So there is air in the lung tissue or uh, the alveoli are filled with air. When it comes to pulmonary edema, so pulmonary edema uh, is a huge topic. It can be divided into cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema. For example, if it is cardiogenic, the heart is not functioning right. So it is ins insufficient and it can no longer pump blood correctly. The blood starts uh, accumulating in the vessels beside the alveolar, alveolar sacs 
and because of the pressure in these um, in these uh, capillaries in the lung, uh, we start seeing a fluid enter into the alveoli and the alveoli sacs. And because of that, we see here that the alveoli are no longer, so there is a small amount of air, but in the alveoli there is fluid. So fluid in the lung tissue or in the alveoli is actually pulmonary edema or it is also called pulmonary congestion. One of the first signs are so-called curly B lines. Curly B lines. So they can they can be seen in the bases of the lung. So as these uh, septa between the lung tissue become more ed edematous because of fluid, we can see them as fine white lines. And that means that there is some fluid accumulating in the lung, and that is called curly B lines. Also, when we see patchy uh, whitish opacities uh, in the lung, hilar enlargement, uh, that is also a characteristic, characteristic finding that uh, is uh, associated with uh, pulmonary edema. One important uh, thing is that pulmonary edema is, as I said, accumulation of fluid in lung tissue or in the alveoli. There is also a term called pulmonary, uh, pulmonary effusion. So, so pulmonary effusion. Pulmonary effusion, basically, the fluid is accumulating, but it is accumulating in the plural space. So, the fluid is accumulating here in the plural space around the lung, and, it, and that means pulmonary effusion. Pulmonary edema is fluid accumulation in the lung tissue or the alveoli. So that is important to know why these two terms are different. Now we will see some uh, x-rays. So now we will look at pulmonary edema x-rays. So in this x-ray it is a pathological one where we have pathology on both lung fields. So first of all also the heart silhouette, uh, it should be under the heart, so the, it is, the heart silhouette should be half of the whole thorax diameter. The, it is called the cardiothoracic index. Here it looks like it is a little bigger than that, so the heart silhouette is enlarged. That is important in order to maybe, uh, maybe the patient is uh, having heart problems and uh, the heart is dilated uh, and the heart suet will then be larger. Then what is interesting here, so if you look closely, maybe it's, it is a little bit hard to see, there are small horizontal white lines here at the basal parts of uh, the lung fields. Maybe they are a little bit harder to see, but they are present, especially this one. And those are actually those uh, curly B lines I talked about. They are uh, maybe a subtle sign of uh, pulmonary edema, but in this case, we have also, we see how this hilum here and this hilum here, they are bulkier and bigger than normal. There is more white here and they are actually enlarged. Then we see how all of these uh, markings, uh, these vessels uh, and the tissue around them, we see how there is more white here that is not normal, shouldn't look like this, should be more darker, especially in this uh, middle and lower, and here also in the middle and lower lung field, there is uh, much of this patchy white opacities that are present in these fields. That is actually pulmonary congestion or pulmonary edema. So these bilateral diffuse uh, 
um, patchy opacities that are forming. Also, one important thing, here is the costophrenic angle, here also. Normally, the costophrenic angle is sharp and dark. Here, it is almost horizontal and there is white here. That means that we have also pulmonary edema, but we have also pulmonary effusion here. So it means that there is fluid also in the pleural space, but it is, there is also fluid accumulating in the alveoli. And this patient will definitely have dyspnea and tachypnea and some underlying condition that causes this fluid accumulation in the thorax and in the lung tissue. So, <clears throat> uh, the, once uh, you analyze many x-rays, the quantity is very important in order to differentiate, for example, what is the difference between pulmonary edema and pulmonary fibrosis. It is uh, important to know these conditions, uh, what causes them, and then to look at many x-rays. The quantity is very important to accommodate the eye. Once the eye accommodates, you will easier uh, distinguish between pulmonary edema and other conditions. So here is another x-ray. And this x-ray, this is actually a lying down patient. And we see that the whole lung is white. In this case, this is actually pulmonary uh, effusion, but this is a very big effusion. This effusion is so massive that it, it, it is pushing the heart and the big vessels to the other side, to the left side. The heart is more normally centrally located. This is too left for the heart. And we see that also the trachea is pushed to the uh, left side. This is the trachea, maybe a little bit hard to see because I enlarged the photo and the trachea is it has air in it so it is darker and here it is actually uh, splitting into the principal bronchi the left and the right one and they're all with the heart pushed to the left side because of this big pulmonary uh, effusion so this big mass uh, that is uh, confluent uh, actually and big and whitish is more uh, is actually more uh, leaning towards pulmonary effusion than edema. Edema is more apache opacity. So, as I said, in uh, the course of time, uh, analyzing many uh, x-ray examples, the eye gets accommodated. And that is a very important thing in becoming more professional uh, besides having this basic knowledge in analyzing uh, different x-rays. Thank you.